So we've got some things to catch up on. Um, last Sunday, uh, Palm Sunday, we watched The Passion of the Christ. And then last night, we had our third or fourth Mystagogy event. Um, so I was going to recap both of those. Sunday night, I couldn't have been more proud of our students. I was a little nervous going into it watching my favorite movie, The Passion of the Christ. I didn't know if some of these kids were going to be disrespectful or rowdy or rambunctious. But I got to say that they were very well behaved um, from the beginning, from the very first, I mean, the scene in the garden, they took it very seriously. Um, no, I mean, and I, I don't know how you can, you know, like when you're seeing these things like, whoa, this is this is some serious stuff. So, I mean, in great cinematography, like just awesome stuff, even for a 15 year old movie. I mean, it was fantastic. So our kids did a great job. Um, and whether you'd seen it seven times or one time, it, it hits you every time. You're getting misty eyed. You're, there's tears coming to your eyes. You're getting goosebumps, um, no matter how many times you've seen it. Um, I, I'd love to watch it again next year. I think it's gonna gonna maybe be a tradition for as long as I'm around here um, that, that we can watch that movie. Um, I mean, I'd like to have a little Q and A. Um, didn't know how exactly to to go, being the first time, but I think next year we'll have a little Q and A because kids did have questions about it. Who was this person? What was this scene? What's going on here? But overall, I think it made it real, and I think it's done it for so many Americans as the highest grossing rated R movie of all time. Um, people have come to the realization that it's not just a story that we read. It's not just some some letters on a on a book or in a page. It's what it is. Is this is a real event? This happened to the Son of God, and people witnessed it. It was a thing. It's a historical event, and it's real. It's not just something that we made up or th that people just thought of to 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 get a lot of money. So um, I thought it was good. I'd like to do it again. Other than that, Mr. Goji was last night, and um, I thought it was okay. Um, maybe the discussion was a little, maybe a bit too high, um, or a bit too broad to really get into it. But at the end of the night, um, maybe if our students didn't come in thinking that that faith and reason, or that or faith and science, if they thought that they were opposed to each other, I think our students left realizing that maybe they're not opposed to each other. Um, we first went through, you know, some examples of folks, of famous people saying that that science has disproven faith or disproven God, or that science has has made um, religion not even important anymore. And on the flip side, we have people that are religious, um, people of faith who say that that science is, or, or that reason is an, is an enemy of faith, which I was really surprised to hear. Um, it really caught me off guard. Um, but then we went into different popes, um, different Catholics who would say that faith and reason are both crucial. Like you have to have these two things. They're both very important to coming to know truth. Um, and I think that we've, we've been discussing some of those things already, how we can reasonably know that God exists. Um, but this, this kind of that put a little bow on it where we can say, hey, yeah, we can have faith, but yeah, we can have reason too. Um, I went through a list of all the Catholic scientists that they list on Wikipedia, and I, I was surprised, and the kids were surprised as to how many there are. So, if you want to, if you're bored someday and you look that up, Catholic scientists on Wikipedia, I think you'll be surprised how long that list is because you can. Really, I mean, you're just like scroll, 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 scroll. Um, but I think it was impactful for our students um, to, to to think about that and realize that, that yeah, faith and reason aren't opposed to each other. They're not enemies. This battle that, that people have been postulating about isn't a real thing. It's it's fake news. I've never said that before. Fake news. But it's not real. Faith and reason. Both good. We went on to, after talking about faith and reason, we went and talked about the communities that you hang out in. Uh, many of our students will come to their belief in, in, in atheism or or whatever whatever is drawing them from the Catholic faith. Um, they'll come to that realization because of the folks they hang out with. Like, well, I'm smart, and all my friends are smart, and they don't believe in God, so therefore I don't believe in God. A quote I put up, which many of us have heard before, is that you will become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Maybe you're not the prettiest, maybe you're not the smartest, maybe you're not the richest, maybe you're not the, the coolest, but you're the average of those five people. And the kids, they didn't quite grasp it, you know, why... Because uh, at the bottom it said, like, make your, choose wisely. They didn't get what, what, what was that. So I put up another slide that said, um, if you hang out with clowns, don't be surprised when your life becomes a circus. And they were like, oh, okay, that makes sense. And I think through their examples, we really talked about, man, if you hang out with certain people, that influences how you, the choices that you make. You know, we're all influential. It's, it's, it's good for us to be involved in communities and for those communities to influence us, if we think about if you're in a tribe or if you're in a if you're in a small clan or a family, like you want to be part of that group, you want to be accepted. If you're on the outskirts of that group, it's harder for you to stay alive. It's harder for you to get food, harder for you to get water, harder for you to reproduce. We want to adapt to those groups. Um, so this is a thing that that happens innately for us, um, and it can be good, both good and bad. You know, many examples of bad influences in students' lives were were expressed last night. Um, and I didn't give this example, but I I'll give it now. You know, a godson of mine. Um, he could be doing a lot of other things in his life, but he chooses to hang out with, with other students who want to talk about their faith, 
who want to talk about what's going on in their lives and how to make good choices and, and avoid bad choices. And I'm very proud of him. I think it's fantastic that he's doing that at an age where he could choose not to do that. He's surrounding himself with people that are good for him and good for his life. Um, so a positive example about how community impacts us. So hopefully that was impactful for our students and they think um, as, they, as they choose who to hang out with um, because it's a choice. Um, you have that choice to hang out with whoever you want to and, and you'll reap the benefits of that. Again, if you hang out with clowns, don't be surprised that your life is a circus. Hmm. Um, so I hope you guys have a fantastic Triduum. It starts today with Holy Thursday, Good Friday on Friday. Um, with a brief stop at Holy Saturday, I do enjoy Holy Saturday. I think I enjoy it because most people don't know a lot about it. And then um, Easter Sunday coming up. So hope you guys enjoy yourself and have a fantastic um, end to this Holy Week.